We got some chance to do some sunnah tawaf, spend time in the masjid, meet new people. We even got some shopping done. So instead of being double charged all the time, I decide that, hey, guess what? I am going to speak Farsi now. Because when you speak English, suddenly the prices of everything become expensive. And I'm like, wait a second, I don't want to get ripped off here. So guess what? I started to get into Farsi mode and I'm like, Salam, how are you? How are you? I want to speak Farsi. 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 Huh? 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 The shopping experience for me was kind of weird because I'm used to being in America where there's line and order, but there in Saudi Arabia there was no line and definitely not any order. So like I'll be standing in line, I'm like, okay, I'm up in a couple of people in front of me and I'll be up any moment and suddenly this guy will walk in and another guy will walk in, another guy will walk in. I'm like, wait a second, um, what happened to the line? And then I realized I'm the only one standing in a line. Everyone else is me first, me first, me first, me first, me first. Get out of my way, get out of my way, me first. Which is the exact opposite of what Islam teaches because in Islam you want for your brother what you would want for yourself. And there is no me first, me first, me first. So for my friends who are in Saudi Arabia who do me first, me first, me first, my words of advice and my suggestion is try you first. You first. Huh? It's not that hard. You first. You first. On the other hand, you meet these very nice people who are very kind to you. And that's because you're a haji. A haji, a person who's here to perform hajj, is actually a guest of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So sometimes people go out of their way to be nice to you and to take care of you because they're hoping to get a great reward from Allah. See, Mecca is amazing because the Kaaba is there, the masjid is amazing, it's about 2 million people can fit in that masjid, that's Masjid al-Haram. But the Prophet Sallallahu masjid in Medina is a completely different. About 1 million people can fit in the masjid at the same time, but it's... This, this sense of peace and tranquility that you don't have in Mecca. I can't really put my finger on it. I don't know how to explain it into the video. It's one of those things that you have to experience. If you go there, in, for Hajj I mean, definitely, definitely, definitely pick a package that you get a chance to go visit Medina. Trust me, you'll love it. I've traveled in many, many cities and seen all these different types of masjids, but by far the Prophet Sallallahu masjid is my favorite. When you go there and you see it and you experience it, you will see exactly what I'm talking about. So after staying in Medina for a few days, we went back to Mecca. And in Mecca, you got a chance to experience what the locals experience. I wouldn't say it's just the Saudi culture, it's many of the non-Western countries. And I'm talking about the driving. The driving is crazy. The driving will drive you crazy. Imagine this area for about four, four cars, but there's five lanes, but not really lanes because there's five cars in that four area space, but there's no lines. Because there's no lines, because why draw lines when people are not going to pay attention to them anyways? And what I mean is all these cars are going, ew, 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 ew. they're cutting you off, and all the people are honking, 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 and then suddenly all this traffic, and we're all going one way, and all these cars are going, it's like, oh, watch out, watch out, oh, watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out. And then finally, <laughs> finally, one car is like, decides to change his mind, and like, he turns around, and he's coming backwards. Wait a second, you can't come backwards. Oh, yes, I can. Oh, yes, I can. <laughs> watch out, watch out, watch out. And you know that part? That, that part of the car that you put your you put your dry cleaning stuff on and you hang them in, in the states in the western countries we put our dry cleaning and we're driving our cars and our dry cleaning there no no over there you hang on with your hands with your dear life and you're holding on to it you you, you quickly make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you say oh Allah save me don't let me crash into watch out watch out to all these cars you know <laughs> you hold on to your dear life and you say oh Allah please I came here to do hajj I did not come here to die with these people driving like insane maniacs Crazy. And then there's a lot of other things that you see that you're not really a fan of. I mean, I see a lot of actions that have nothing to do with Islam, but it's part of the whole culture. This is our culture. I'm like, pfft, culture. Culture that conflicts with your deen? That's nonsense. That's not called culture, that's called nonsense. And then you quickly realize there's two things here. There is culture and there is deen. Of course, I choose deen over culture, but you see these two things and you have to learn to differentiate between the two. Okay, on the bright side, there are some cool stuff that you see. Like, for example, you see people from all countries, like everywhere. Like in our group, we was pretty diverse. We had people, one brother from Jamaica, another guy, another Muslim guy from Puerto Rico, another Muslim guy from, uh, from actually United States. Hey, wait, that's me. <laughs> actually, there was people from all these other countries, countries I've never even heard of before. I was like, wow, this is pretty cool. This is really cool. It's amazing how far Islam has reached. As far as food, we were pretty well fed. I mean, I've heard some horror stories from my friends that came back and said, man, when we, came, we didn't have any food. And uh, 
And whenever we got food, it was cold. And I came back, I'm like, hey, we had plenty of food. <laughs> we had food all the time. Our stomachs were fed. I was like, which group did you go with? <laughs> Personally, I try to cut down on the food because when you eat a lot of food, you have to go to a bathroom. And the bathroom situation? <laughs> it's not like here in the United States. You see, in the United States, when I want to go to the bathroom, I just go to the bathroom. But in Saudi Arabia, we don't just go to the bathroom. <laughs> because there's too many people going to the same place at the same time. What I mean is, everyone's there for Hajj, but there's not too many bathrooms. So what you have to do is like, hey, a second, I need to go to the bathroom. Well, that's going to be too late because by the time you go to want to go to the bathroom, you have to stay online for 40 minutes. <laughs> Doesn't work. It's not just that. You see, the bathroom's also the shower. So what you thought the guy in front of you is going to take five minutes, he's taking after 20 minutes because he's in there like, la, 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 la. <laughs> And he's like, I was like, I have to go pee, I have to go pee. Can you please hurry up? Hello, can you please hurry up? He's not hurrying up, so you'll have to go earlier. When you want to go to the bathroom, go 20 minutes before you have to go, so you'll be ready to go. One thing that amazed me about Hajj is that no matter how rich or poor you are, no matter how famous or insignificant you are back home, at Hajj, we're all the same. For men, we're only wearing two pieces of white cloth, so you can't tell the difference between this person and that person. And that's one thing that was amazing because it really, really humbles you. And it was beautiful that two million people have left all their worldly life to come to one place to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And because during Hajj you don't have the normal distractions you have back at home, you get a chance to think. You start to think about all the weaknesses that you have and how you can improve them. About how that when you come back from Hajj you want to be a better person. And inshallah if your Hajj is accepted, it's like starting all over. You get a second chance. So for all those people who say, wow, I wish I could start over. I wish I can clear out all the stuff I've done in the past and, 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 and clear my record with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, save your money. Even if it means starting today, from this video, save your money, save your money, so you have the opportunity to go to Hajj. Not only do you get a chance to perform one of the major pillars of Islam, but you get a chance to learn a lot about yourself, you get a chance to reflect, you get a chance to change your life, inshallah. See, back here, shaitan constantly gives us excuses on why not to make hajj. Remember, shaitan never tells you not to go to hajj. He just tells you to go next year. But the problem is, no one guaranteed you tomorrow, let alone next year. So what if next year never comes up for you? How many people do you think are lying in their graves, who are your age or younger, who thought they're going to go to hajj next year, and next year never came for them? And they, if you have the means... You don't want to have that, on, that burden on your shoulders on Day of Judgment and because you really don't have an answer. What are you going to say? So if you have the means and you have the money to go, then go, inshallah. When I was at Hajj, I told my tour guide that when I get back home, I want to make a video about Hajj. So I contacted the brother, Hajj Pros, and I told him, listen, if I make a video about Hajj, um, will you give the same discount that you gave me to them? This is not what their website is advertising, it's actually less. And he said, okay, I agree. So he said, if you tell him you watch this video, he'll give you a lower price than what is ever advertised on the website. And his price on the website is already like the cheapest price I found for any VIP package out there, period. And what I want in exchange, inshallah, from you is that when you go to Hajj, and if you make it there, you make dua for me when you're there. That's all I want from you guys. That's it. Nothing else. And by the way, I don't work for Hajj Pros, so if you have any questions regarding Hajj, do not email me, because I don't know anything about it. I do not work for Hajj Pros, I don't plan to work for Hajj Pros, I'm just Baba Ali, making videos, and this is just a video about Hajj. I was just happy with my experience, and I just wanted to share with you guys. Inshallah, you guys will have a nice experience as well. And no matter what group you go with, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for you, and put you around good people, that will be good examples, and give you a good experience. And please keep me in your du'as. Jazakallah khair. This is Ali reminding you just in case you forgot. This is Ali reminding you just in case you forgot.